Hello everyone. Information Box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today Difference between Primary and Secondary Metabolites But before starting this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. Let's see what is the table of content. First, we will look into the definitions of primary and secondary metabolites, its key difference, examples of both primary and secondary metabolites. Let's start with the definition of primary metabolites. The substances that are immediately involved in an organism metabolic pathways which are required for its growth, development and reproduction are known as primary metabolites. These metabolites are linked to the physiological functions that take place within the body. The organism's growth mechanism causes the production of primary metabolites during the growth period. The word trophophase refers to the growth phase that is connected to the production of primary metabolites. When the body's required nutrients are present in the medium, the creation of primary metabolites begins. These are also known as central molecules and are present in the majority of cells in the body. Primary metabolites are essential for a variety of metabolic processes because some serve as a substrate and other as triggers. While some primary metabolites such as amino acids are present in all creatures, others are only found in specific cells or organisms. Although primary metabolites are crucial for an individual's growth and development, they have no drug effects or interaction with other elements. As primary metabolites are continuously needed by the body, they are typically produced at a high rate. These can also be rarely extracted using basic extraction techniques. Primary essential metabolites and main metabolic end products are the two categories in which primary metabolites are subdivided. Proteins and carbohydrates, for example, are primary essential metabolites because they contribute to the structural and physiological structure of the body. The products of different metabolic pathways such as lactic acid and ethanol are examples of primary metabolic end products. Proteins, enzymes, carbohydrates, lipids, vitamins, ethanol, lactic acid, butanol and other substances are example of main metabolites. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Now let's see what is the definition of secondary metabolites. Secondary metabolites are organic substances that are produced by a variety of organisms but are crucial for ecological and other processes even though they are not directly engaged in the growth, development or reproduction of organisms. Specialized metabolites or natural products are the other names for secondary metabolites. The lack of these substances has little to no impact on the organism capacity to survive because secondary metabolites are not involved in growth and development of the organism. On the other hand, some minor impacts might be seen over time. However, it has been observed that the horizontal transfer of these metabolites across species have played a significant part in the evolution of some organisms. Some secondary metabolites are unique to a species and are only found in that species. Secondary metabolites may be crucial for other processes like protection, competition, and interspecies communication even though they are not essential for life. The biosynthetic origin of secondary metabolites determines the categories in which they are divided. A few secondary metabolites are modified version of primary metabolites. In the majority of organisms, these are also created during the stationary period of growth. The word idophase refers to this stage of growth. The majority of secondary metabolites typically serve as a line of defense against different invading foreign organisms. These are difficult to extract and produced in relatively smaller amounts. Additionally, secondary metabolites are not a component of the organism molecular structure. For the creation of medicines and other compounds, some groups of secondary metabolites have been used in a variety of biotechnological processes. Different secondary metabolites are involved in various procedures because secondary metabolites are species-specific. 
Secondary metabolites can be anything from steroids to medicines to phenolic or alkaloid to essential oils. Now let's see the key difference between the primary and secondary metabolites with the help of this table. Bases for comparison are definition, growth phase. Bases for comparison are definition, growth phase, quantity, extraction, specificity, involvement, structural component, its importance, defensive action, and lastly examples. In the comparison of definition, primary metabolites are involved in organism metabolic pathways which are required for its growth, development, and reproduction. Whereas secondary metabolites are organic substances that are produced by a variety of organisms but are crucial for ecological and other processes but are not important in growth, development and reproduction of organism. Primary metabolites are also called central metabolites whereas secondary metabolite has the name specialized metabolites. In growth phase, production of primary metabolites occur during the organism growth period, whereas stationary period of the organism is when secondary metabolites are created. Likewise, in the primary metabolites, the developmental stage is known as trophophase, whereas in the secondary metabolite, the developmental stage is called idophase. The quantity in primary metabolites are large amount, whereas in secondary metabolites, it is small amounts. Extraction of primary metabolites are easy, whereas it is difficult in secondary metabolites. The difference in specificity, primary metabolites can be same in some animals because they are not species specific, whereas in secondary metabolites, they are species specific, they vary from organism to organism. Primary metabolites are involved in organisms growth, maturation and reproduction whereas secondary metabolites are involved in ecological processes and interactions between organisms depend on secondary metabolites. Structural component in some species the molecular structure may be formed by primary metabolites whereas in secondary metabolites Molecular makeup of this creature does not include secondary metabolites. Importance of primary metabolite is It is used in different industries for various reasons, whereas secondary metabolites are used in several biotechnological processes, like to create medicines and other compounds. In primary metabolites, defense system does not involve, whereas in secondary metabolite, it can function as a defensive system and are active against outside invaders. Examples of primary metabolites are proteins, enzymes, carbohydrates, lipids, vitamin, ethanol, lactic acid, butanol, and other substances are example of main metabolites, whereas for secondary metabolites, as for secondary metabolites, it can be anything from steroids to medicines to phenolic to aliquot to essential oils. Now let's dive into the examples of primary metabolites. We have two types of examples, enzymes and carbohydrates. Let's have a brief on enzymes. In the bodies of various organisms, proteins called enzymes are created as a primary metabolites. The body's different metabolic pathways are all categorized by enzymes which are specific substances. Proteins known as enzymes are made up of polypeptide chains of amino acids and are extremely specific for a process they catalyze. The cellular processes would take a very long time to finish if there were no enzymes. Due to their conservatism, enzymes do not deplete themselves during the chemical processes. These are engaged in almost all types of metabolic pathways from internal digestion and absorption to cellular respiration. The enzymes produced by different organisms are extracted for use in businesses for procedures like wine fermentation, bread leavening, cheese curdling and beer brewing. Lipases, amylases, proteases and other types of enzymes are few examples. Next is carbohydrates. An essential Part of the structural and physiological makeup of all living things is played by a class of organic compounds known as carbohydrates. 
among the most significant main metabolites that are present in all living things are carbohydrates. A biomolecule made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen is known as carbohydrates. Similar to cellulose in plants and peptidoglycan in bacteria, these give creatures structure. Additionally, these substances are also metabolized to produce energy for the organism development and operation. Different kinds of carbohydrates exist according to their length and makeup. They are also separated depending on their jobs they perform. The Krebs cycle and glycolysis are two crucial biological mechanisms that use carbohydrates as substrate. Monosaccharides may even serve as energy and fat storage structures and are engaged in the synthesis of macromolecules. Sugars like glucose, cellulose, glycogen, chitin and peptidoglycan are examples of carbs. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribing. Examples of Secondary Metabolites Pigments and Flavonoids Let's dive into pigments. Pigments are chemical mixtures of different hues that are created by different organisms for different reasons. These are secondary metabolites that are made by a variety of organisms including microbes and plants. Chlorophyll, a plant pigment is required for activities like photosynthesis whereas bacterial pigments can be extracted and used as dyes in various sectors. The majority of pigments are non-toxic and some may even have therapeutic value for use as adhesive and vitamins. Bacterial pigments made by microbial fermentation for industrial uses have a number of benefits including less expensive production, simpler extraction, higher yield due to strain improvement, no need for scav raw materials and no seasonality. Microorganisms produced by your pigments are flavored over those made by plants due to their stability and year-round availability for cultivation. Chlorophyll, astaxanthin, zeaxanthin, indigodine, eudopsin, and other colors are examples of these. Next is flavonoids. All fruits and veggies contain flavonoids, which are secondary metabolites in plants. Flavonoids and phytonutrients are plant chemicals that give many plants and creatures their color. With more than 6,000 types identified, these are the largest groups of phytonutrients discovered in plants. Important antioxidants present in these substances have anti-inflammatory and immune-boosting properties. Additionally, they have photoreceptors, visual attractants, feeding detergent, antimicrobial and light filtering capacity. Flavonoids are known to regulate the growth of specific parts as well as the entire plant which helps plant respond morphologically to stress. By interacting with a variety of protein kinases, flavonoids have the potential to be important signaling molecules in animals. Various woody plants contain flavonoids such as epignin, luteinin, hesperitin, gnistin, etc. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. Thank you so much.